Now we're going to take a look at metal face sensors and welding environments. In a weld environment, you have two main concerns from the sensor's point of view. The first is the presence of weld slag, those hot molten fragments that whenever a resistive welder probes touch, that explosion that happens that puts those fragments into the air, those can become embedded on a sensor housing or on the sensor face. Uh, secondly, we're going to take a look at also the weld fields because to generate those explosions, you need a lot of current and that high current will create a magnetic field that sometimes can false trip a sensor if the field's strong enough. Let's take a look at weld slag. Here's an example of a metal face sensor that was close to a weld probe. You can see here that the weld beads have grown on the threading. That causes two problems. First of all, if those weld beads grow over the face, the sensor can latch on. Secondly, if they grow into the threading, then the nut used to remove the sensors can become locked and it won't spin. So sometimes you might need, if the sensor requires maintenance, a hacksaw to take it out. What Pepperell and Fuchs has done with the pile driver is create a, a material called black armor. And it's a coating that we bake in at approximately 900 degrees. And what happens then is it repels those weld, slags, uh, weld slag particles or weld berries so they won't stick to the sensor. Also, we have a special cable that goes along with this coating for some of our two-wire DC uh, metal face sensors. That cable is also suitable for much higher temperatures than a regular cable. Let's take a look at the cables I just mentioned. In the front here, this yellow cable is a standard PVC cable that comes with any uh, sensor. Behind it is our new welding cable. In my hand, I have an 800 degree soldering iron. If I take a look at the PVC cable and I touch it, you can see the smoke coming up. Immediately it burns. If I take the same 800 degree probe and compress it against our welding cable, you can hold it and hold it and hold it, lift it off, superficial mark. So if your sensor lasts in a welding environment for five years, but your cable's only capable of lasting for three days, it doesn't do you much good. So you need that combination of a tough cable and a tough sensor. When performing resistive welds, Currents of 10, 20, even 30,000 amps are fairly common. When you have that high a current running through a probe, you also get with it tremendous magnetic fields. If your proximity sensor is mounted within these fields, you can have problems with false tripping. That tremendous magnetic energy will saturate the core of the proc switch and false on. Pepperell and Fuchs has circuitry within its proximity sensors to ignore these weld fields. In my hand, I have a, <clears throat> a strong magnet. If I take that magnet and wave it across the sensor, that simulates a weld field. As you can see, the sensor is functional, but it's not influenced at all by the magnetic field. Now let's take a look at how some of the metal face competitors fare. This unit here. It's pretty good, but you can still see it gets influenced by the, the magnet. Now let's take a look at this unit here. So as you can see, although these sensors look very similar together, they all have a weld spatter immune coating, but inside they aren't so similar. So be careful, whenever you're ordering a weld immune proximity sensor, don't just look at the coating, just don't look at the face thickness, but also make sure that it's got sufficient weld withstandability to withstand any of the magnetic fields you might be generating. I appreciate you taking the time to watch our video on the pile driver and I hope it did a good job of explaining why it's the sensor of choice for harsh duty applications.